Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zara and today I'm going to be talking about some authors that I need to be reading. None of these authors I've ever read any of their books. I might own some of their books but I've never actually taken the plunge and read any of their works at the moment at the time of the filming of this video. So let's jump right in. The first is KJ Parker. Now Alan loves KJ Parker and another friend of mine, Michael, also really likes KJ Parker. And so I purchased The Folding Knife, which is a standalone. And then I also purchased the first book in the Two of Swords trilogy. I'm not actually sure if that's the name of the trilogy, but the first book is called Two of Swords. And I've heard some really interesting things about his writing style. I've heard that he focuses a lot on kind of economics and political systems, which is something that I personally really love. It sounds in theory like something up my street. I know his writing style is quite unique from what I understand. And I know Alan has mentioned a couple of times that it's not to everybody's taste, but regardless, I love the fact that it kind of focuses on economic systems because that is something that I am personally quite interested in. KJ Parker is definitely someone I'm planning to pick up soon. The next author is Tad Williams. Now Tad Williams I think is one of the OG kind of fantasy, epic fantasy writers. I came across him kind of by accident. I was just looking at, I was researching a couple of months back some of the more kind of old school fantasy authors. There's a lot of really great things being written now but it's nice to kind of track back to kind of where some of these authors have potentially been influenced and Tad Williams is a name that comes up quite a lot. I have the first book in the, I don't remember the name of the series, but the first book is The Dragonbone Chair. It's a mammoth of a book, I think it's like 800 pages, and I think all three books are about that size. So even though it's trilogy, in reality, you know, it's probably actually six books is the way that I think about it because it's so huge. I I love the, the sound of the dragon bone chair. It sounds kind of like very classical epic fantasy and sometimes that's what I want to read. So Tad Williams is definitely on my radar for next year, but you know, in reality, let's see if I actually get to a mammoth of a book that size. The next one is more of a, I mean, I don't actually know if her, if her series is YA, but I feel like maybe it's more new adult. I don't actually know, but that is Sabah Tahir. Sabah Tahir is somebody that I've only heard generally very, very positive things about. My friends in the Rogue Mood Readers Discord Club all love the Ember Quartet. I've only heard, honestly, only heard amazing things about it. So I also love the fact that her works, I believe are Middle Eastern inspired, please don't quote me on that, but they are like kind of Middle Eastern Asian inspired. That's something that I've really been getting into recently. And I do own the quartet. I actually bought the, I think it was Fairy Loot. I bought the Fairy Loot or Illumicrate editions. I don't actually know. I think they're the same company, but regardless, I bought the Fairy Loot and Illumicrate editions that are signed by Sabah to here. And I'm excited to jump in. Next author is Brian Staveley. Brian Staveley. So I came across him because he did an interview with Patrick Leo, who I will link down below. He just seems like a really cool guy. A, I like supporting authors that are just nice people <laughs> and B, you know, he's recently released his most recent work, which I believe is a standalone that is set uh, some years after his original trilogy, which is the Chronicles of the Unhewn Throne. Pretty much as soon as I finished watching that interview, I ordered all three books. A, they have beautiful covers and B, it's a story that is full of political intrigue. And I, I particularly love political intrigue between family members. And from what I understand, the family members are all kind of warring against each other, but they have to come together to figure out who killed their father, who is the king. So I'm super excited to read this book because it is a story that is full of a lot of different tropes that I really enjoy. I've, I've genuinely only heard great things. I've heard the first book is a little bit slow because it's selling a lot of the context, but then it really starts to pick up towards the end of that and then book two and book three are crazy all the way through. So another author on my radar who I need to get to very soon, maybe maybe towards the end of this year, probably quite unlikely, but we'll see. And that is Sebastian D. Castell. The reason why Sebastian D. Castell is so appealing to me is because his books are kind of swashbuckling, adventure focused. You know, if you've watched any of my previous videos, my favorite book, one of my favorite books of all time is The Three Musketeers, which is 
the quintessential swashbuckling adventure story. You know, I've, I've seen a couple of the reviews and people who say, you know, if you like Dumas, you'll love this. It's a slightly modern take on it. You know, I have a feeling I, it's just gonna be a story that I love and there's gonna be characters that I'm really gonna enjoy. Sebastian de Castell is is 100% an author that I'm going to try and read by the end of this year, if not very early next year, because his books seem like they are targeted at me. He's also written, I believe, uh, a more YA focused series called Spell Slinger. It's also another series that I would really love to jump into, but I will probably just start with the Great Coats Quartet because it's like swashbuckling historical fantasy fiction. I mean, what more could you want? Next is a sci-fi author who, for some reason, I've heard a lot about recently. I mean, he's been on my radar for a while. I do like sci-fi. I definitely prefer fantasy, but I do love a good sci-fi book. And that is Dan Simmons. Dan Simmons has written one of, probably one of the most well-known sci-fi books, and that is Hyperion. I genuinely have no idea what Hyperion is about. I have it, I own it. A couple of my friends have read it. Angela loves it. I know she read it recently and she she was raving about it. It just feels like a no-brainer. It's, it's, it's an author that I've heard a lot about, but I just haven't quite made the jump yet into reading his work. So it's inevitable that it's going to happen soon. And the next author is Martha Wells. Martha Wells is somebody I've heard a lot about in the last like year. Charmaine loves Murderbot and somebody who's, you know, studied a lot around kind of artificial intelligence and sentient beings and robotics and advancement of robotics. It is right up my street. You know, I study this at university, something that I'm personally very interested in. And when that crosses into my fiction books, even better. Murderbot, All Systems Red, is a is a is a is a series, is a book that I, I really want to get to soon. I also love the fact that they're they're quite short. So you can kind of use them as not palate cleansers, but you can kind of use them as a as a as a breather before you go into a more intense series or larger book. All right, we're down to the last three. So the next one is Fonda Lee. I feel like Fonda Lee gets a lot of praise. I'm kind of worried that her books are overhyped. I feel like that's a really unfair judgment to make just because her books are being talked about a lot. I own Jade City and Jade War. I know the third book has just come out recently and it, you know, I've watched a couple of non-spoiler reviews and again, people seem to be raving about it. I'm super excited to read it. The premise behind it is super fascinating to me. I love fiction that surrounds families and like warring families. As you can tell, I like a lot of political intrigue. I love that when you kind of have two sides kind of like batting heads and, and it's kind of in the backdrop of all these machinations that are happening. And you have individual characters who are trying to figure their way out of that system that they're a part of. That is a series that I'm really looking forward to. I'm a little bit worried that I'm not gonna like it as much as everybody else does. I have a feeling a lot of people feel like this when they may be going to Joe Abercrombie, but it is what it is. So Fonda Lee, gonna try and get to her early next year. Her books sound really cool and I'm excited. Okay, the next one, the penultimate one is David Gemmell. David Gemmell is an author that I've heard a lot about recently. He's come up in the context of influencing quite a lot of the authors that I like. And so I feel like, you know, you kind of have to go to the source, right? David Gemmell also seems to be talked about in that vein as having such a huge influence on the fantasy genre. You know, I have Legend, the first book in the Legend series, and I'm planning to read that potentially this year, potentially, you know, maybe October or November. I've just heard great things. I've heard his writing style is really awesome. I've heard that his prose is really beautiful and that they're quite good palette cleansers as well because they're not super long, which is always refreshing in fantasy. And the last author, and this was in no particular order, by the way, it just happened to be this way, is Robin Hobb. Robin Hobb is an author that I am scared to read because she gets so much love her books get so much love. The Farseer trilogy, I think is like the first trilogy in this like mammoth of a series, which I think is called Realm of the Elderlings. There's like 20 plus books, which is insane. I love those types of series though, where you kind of have isolated series within this much bigger world. It's, you know, I, I kind of think of the Cosmere in that way as well. Like, but apparently you should kind of read them in order from what I understand. I'm scared. <laughs> because it gets so much love, because it gets so much, you know, her fans are so passionate. I'm just really worried that I'm not gonna like it. I hate it when a book is given so much high expectation and then you read it and it falls flat. I'm just really worried that's gonna happen for me. And I feel like I've built it up in my own head now that there's this such high expectation that I'm just terrified I'm, I'm not gonna enjoy it. 
as much as everybody else has. I know some people have problems with it. I know that the way the story is told can be quite difficult for some people or they just don't like it, which is totally fair enough. But I don't I don't know if I'll have any problems with it. I guess we'll see. But the Farsi trilogy is definitely a series that I want to start next year. But I'm scared. And that's it. Those are some of the authors that I want to be reading soon. They, as I mentioned, they're all authors that I've not read any of their works before. So they are all completely new authors to me in that sense. There's a nice kind of mixture here. I mean, I focus purely on kind of fantasy and sci-fi this time around, but I will do a, another video on non-fantasy books and, you know, authors that I also would like to really read. I've got a whole list of kind of contemporary and kind of classical authors that I'd love to read, but I thought it'd be better to differentiate the two videos. Anyway, let me know if you've read any of those authors below. Below. I would really really love to hear if any of those are your favorites or if you disliked any of them let's take it down to the comments and in the meantime I will see you in the next video take care be safe and I'll speak to you soon bye everyone